So what is this k? K is called as proportionality constant or it is also called as modulus of elasticity. Young's modulus, bulk modulus and rigidity modulus are the three types of modulus of elasticity. It does not depend on dimension of the body. Modulus of elasticity does not depend on any dimensions of the body. Hello everyone. Welcome to session 3 of chapter 9, Mechanical Properties of Solids. This is Swati, Faculty of Physics, Vidyashram Pri University College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Students, we are discussing about the properties of solids, mechanical properties of solids, elastic behavior of solids. So, in the last session, we had discussed about what is strain, what are the types of strain, we had discussed about Hooke's law, which states that within the elastic limit, stress and strain are directly proportional to each other. I explained you what is the meaning of elastic limit. We had discussed about stress strain curve as well, which is very important for your examination. And also what are elastomers. All these concepts we are discussed in the last class. In today's session, we are discussing about the topic modulus of elasticity. What are the different types of modulus of elasticity? So yes, what is modulus of elasticity? How to define modulus of elasticity? From Hooke's law, we know that stress and strain are directly proportional to each other. So we can write this as stress is equal to K into strain is what we discussed in the last session. So what is this K? K is called as proportionality constant or it is also called as modulus of elasticity. Now how to define modulus of elasticity which is equal to K equals stress divided by strain. So this is the expression for modulus of elasticity. Now looking at this expression we can define what is modulus of elasticity. So it is the ratio of stress acting on the body. It is the ratio of stress acting on the body to the resulting strain produced in it. It is the ratio of stress acting on the body to the resulting strain produced in it is called modulus of elasticity. It is denoted by the letter K. I hope it is clear to everybody and Newton per meter square is the SI unit of modulus of elasticity. Yes ma'am, how do you get Newton per meter square? As I explained in the last class, the SI unit of stress is Newton per meter square because stress is defined as force acting per unit area. So SI unit of force is Newton and area it is meter square. So if this goes to numerator, you will get Newton per meter square. This is the SI unit of stress. Now we are talking about the SI unit of modulus of elasticity and it is defined as ratio of stress to strain. Stress SI unit of Newton per meter square and strain is a unitless quantity. It is a dimensionless quantity. So stress has no unit. Since stress has no unit, the SI unit of modulus of elasticity is Newton per meter square. Next, it does not depend on dimension of the body. Modulus of elasticity does not depend on any dimensions of the body. It depends on the nature of the material or it depends on the type of material. Then, what are the parameters on which this modulus of elasticity depends? So, it depends on temperature. How does it vary with temperature? Modulus of elasticity decreases with increase in temperature. Modulus of elasticity is inversely proportional to temperature. As the temperature increases, modulus of elasticity decreases. It does not depend on the dimension of the body, but it depends on the type of the material. For all the materials, the modulus of elasticity is not same. For different different types of materials, it varies. So modulus of elasticity does not depend on dimensions. It depends only on the type of material. So to remember, you have to keep this simple formula in mind. Modulus of elasticity or K, which is equal to the ratio of stress to strain. This is the shortcut to remember the definition of modulus of elasticity, stress by strain, which can also be written as K equals stress by strain. Now, this is the definition and the detail of modulus of elasticity. Now, let us see what are the 
types of modulus of elasticity so there are three types of modulus of elasticity we had studied about three types of stress three types of strain and now we are studying about three types of modulus of elasticity so it's also easy to remember so what are the types of modulus of elasticity let us see so first one is young's modulus it is denoted by capital y young's modulus the next one is bulk modulus and the last one is rigidity modulus young's modulus bulk modulus and rigidity modulus are the three types of modulus of elasticity so let us now see what is young's modulus what is bulk modulus and what is rigidity modulus in detail so first one is young's modulus so you have to remember it is denoted by capital y so what is the so how to define young's modulus what does it mean young's modulus is nothing but the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain longitudinal stress it may be a tensile stress or it may be a compressive stress or normal stress also we can say the ratio of normal stress or the longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain is called as young's modulus remember we know what is modulus of elasticity correct so modulus of elasticity which is denoted by k which is equal to what is the formula it is stress to strain correct so stress to strain is the formula to remember modulus of elasticity we are now studying one of the type of modulus elasticity that is young's modulus so in young's modulus what type of stress is varying that is longitudinal stress so the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain is called as young's modulus because we know stress by strain is modulus of elasticity and young's modulus deals with longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain so it can be written as y is equal to how to define longitudinal stress so stress is nothing but force acting per unit area any type of stress it may be so it is force by area divided by we have longitudinal strain and how to define strain it is nothing but change in dimension to original dimension what dimension we are discussing here that is nothing but length so here we are writing changing length to original length so this is nothing but strain what type of strain longitudinal strain and here it is stress so if you again write stress by strain it is nothing but young modulus of elasticity and young's modulus is saying that the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain so it is very easy to remember so moving on so next consider a cylindrical wire of length l so i have considered a cylindrical wire whose length is l initial length is l so whose and the wires cross sectional area is a so this is a cross sectional area the cross sectional area of the wire is a let the force f acting on it produce an elongation of delta l so what happens if the tensile force is acting at these two faces so when the force act on both the sides we can observe the tensile stress isn't it so there will be a elongation in the wire so what is the meaning of elongation change in length and change in length is given by delta l i explained you very clearly delta always refers to change so length changes as the force applied on both the sides now how to define young's modulus young's modulus is defined as longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain young's modulus is defined as the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain correct so how to define longitudinal stress now it is nothing but force acting per unit area f by a divided by longitudinal strain is change in length to original length i told you what is change in length it is denoted by delta l so delta l divided by l so this can also be written as y is equal to 
f by a divided by change in length to delta l we have so when it gets transposed this goes to numerator and we can write y is equal to f into l divided by a into delta l so this is the formula for finding young's modulus of a material so what are these terms while writing any formula it is very important to explain the terms as well so in this expression f is called the normal force and a is the area of cross section of the wire what i considered and l is the length of the wire so these are the terms you have to explain where f is the normal force and a is the area of cross section and l is the length of the wire here delta l is change in length and y is the young's modulus so to find young's modulus of any material we have a formula fl divided by a into delta l generally for metals young's moduli are large so that is the reason generally for metals young's moduli are large and hence they are more elastic in nature so elastic when we hear this word what comes to our mind only the rubber band or the elastic kind of materials right but the fact is metals are also elastic in nature so for metals the young's modulus is generally more and hence they are more elastic in nature yes now let us consider two types of materials one is steel the other one is copper and now my question is which material is more elastic steel or copper which is more elastic the answer is steel is more elastic than copper since steel is more elastic than copper steel is preferred in heavy duty machines and also in structural designs we never prefer copper for structural designs or in lifting heavy loads in heavy duty machines we prefer only steel because steel's elastic property is more than that of copper what is the reason why it is more elastic and how do you come to a conclusion how can we conclude steel is more elastic and the reason for all these is young's modulus we are discussing about young's modulus the practical significance of young's modulus is it will it will give us an idea whether the material is elastic or it is inelastic so in the study of mechanical properties of solids or the elastic behavior of solids it is very important to know about certain general things so let us know about few things one by one metals have large value of young's moduli i told you what is young's modulus how important in choosing a material so metals all metals generally will be having large value of young's moduli and therefore these materials require a large force to produce a small change in length take one example take one steel wire as well as take a rubber band and try to stretch both so rubber band can be easily stretched but it is not possible to stretch the steel wire as easily as you stretch your rubber band the reason is the young's moduli so metals will be having large young's moduli and hence it require a large amount of force to bring a change in the it requires large amount of force is required to bring small amount of change in the material the next point is steel is more elastic than copper brass and aluminum and this is the reason why steel is preferred in heavy duty machines and also in structural designs since steel is more elastic than copper or brass and or aluminum steel is only preferred in heavy duty machines and also in structural designs so why steel is preferred because i told you young's modulus is the reason young's modulus of steel is more than that of rubber and also copper and also of any other materials so steel is only preferred because young's modulus of steel is more even if you compare steel and rubber which is more elastic steel is more elastic than that of rubber so if we consider rubber physically and if we stretch it we'll say that oh it is more elastic no actually steel is more elastic than rubber the conclusion is because of young's modulus 
So the Young's modulus of steel is more than that of rubber and hence it is more elastic. So Young's modulus for a perfectly rigid body is infinity. So I told you about what is rigid body. A solid, a hard solid object that is having perfect size or shape. But solids can be bent stretched. So in practical, no body is perfectly rigid. But for a perfectly rigid body, the Young's modulus is infinity. So let us move on to our next type of modulus of elasticity that is rigidity modulus. Rigidity modulus is denoted by the letter G. Now, we know what is modulus of elasticity. I am saying that modulus of elasticity is denoted by K and the formula is stress divided by strain which means the ratio of stress to strain is called as modulus of elasticity and how to define rigidity modulus now. So the ratio of shearing stress that is given by sigma s to the shearing strain is called as rigidity modulus. The ratio of shearing stress to shearing strain is called as rigidity modulus and it is given by you can easily remember this formula. So if you remember this formula you can define what is rigidity modulus? So it is given by F by A into theta, where theta is called as shear strain. So consider a cylinder of vertical height. So I am considering a cylinder of vertical height L. So this is the height of the cylinder or which is having a vertical length that is L. Let tangential force acting on its surfaces produce a displacement of delta X. Now I am applying some tangential force here. Because of this tangential force, we can observe a displacement, change in position. The displacement is given by delta x. Let theta be the angular displacement of vertical face. So now delta x is displacement of the vertical face. Now it is making an angle theta. So this theta is nothing but the angular displacement of vertical face. Now, shear modulus can be defined as it is denoted by G and it is defined as shearing stress divided by shearing strain. Now, let us write the expression for this. So, shear modulus G is equal to shearing stress by shearing strain and shearing stress is nothing but any type of stress I told you it is nothing but force per unit area divided by. How to define shearing strain? We have learned this in detail in the concept called shearing strain in our previous session. So shearing strain is defined as delta x by L. So we know delta x by L is equal to theta and the same expression can be written as G equals F by A into theta. So what is F by A? F by A is nothing but stress. So it is nothing but shearing stress. Shearing stress is given by sigma s. So the expression becomes g is equal to sigma s by theta. Why it is sigma s by theta? F by a is nothing but sigma s and in the denominator we have theta. So rigidity modulus g is given by sigma s divided by theta or sigma s is equal to g theta. This is the expression for rigidity modulus of solids. So liquids and gases do not have rigidity modulus because they do not have a definite shape. Since the liquids and gases do not have definite shape, they do not have rigidity modulus. So our next type of modulus of elasticity is bulk modulus. So it is denoted by B. So let us define bulk modulus. It is nothing but the ratio of hydraulic stress acting on a body to the corresponding strain is called as bulk modulus. What happens if the hydraulic stress acts on a body? There will be a resulting hydraulic strain or there will be resulting volume strain. So the ratio of hydraulic stress that acts on a body to bulk strain or the volume strain that causes is called as bulk modulus and it is denoted by B. So bulk modulus can be easily remembered by knowing this formula that is hydraulic stress divided by hydraulic strain. Because of this stress that acts on the body there causes a strain. So what type of stress I am talking about here? It is hydraulic stress that causes hydraulic strain of an object. So the ratio of hydraulic stress to hydraulic strain is called as bulk modulus. So consider an object of whose volume is V. So let us apply some pressure 
so when hydraulic stress or p is applied what is the observation there will be a change in volume so that change in volume is given by delta v and bulk modulus can be written as v is equal to stress is nothing but force per unit area correct so force per unit area can also be written as p pressure that is the pressure what we are applying on the object so what is the result that we can observe there is a change in volume change in volume is delta v and strain can be defined as change in dimension to original dimension what is the dimension that is changing here that is volume so that is change in volume by original volume and hence the expression can be written as b is equal to minus p divided by delta v by v why this negative sign so the negative sign indicates that increase in pressure as the pressure increases the volume of the body gets decreases so increase in pressure results in decrease in volume and hence bulk modulus can be written as v is equal to minus pv divided by delta v this is the formula for bulk modulus so next we have compressibility what is compressibility how to define it in the study of mechanical properties of solids compressibility concept is also very important so compressibility is nothing but the reciprocal of bulk modulus the reciprocal of bulk modulus in the last slide we have seen what is bulk modulus the reciprocal of bulk modulus is called as compressibility and it is denoted by k or it can also be defined as it is also defined as the fractional change in volume the fractional change in volume is nothing but delta v by v small change in volume per unit increase in pressure as the pressure increases we know volume decreases what is the change in volume per increase in pressure that is also nothing but compressibility so it is very easy to remember compressibility is defined as the fractional change in volume that is delta v by v per unit increase in pressure so it is given by the formula k is equal to i told you it is the reciprocal of bulk modulus so k equals 1 divided by b we know what is b we have studied in the last slide it is pv divided by delta v correct so now it is nothing but the reciprocal of b so the formula for compressibility is 1 divided by p into delta v by v or we can also write it as delta v divided by pv the reciprocal of this that is called as compressibility and what is the unit of compressibility what is the si unit of bulk modulus let us now write the si unit of bulk modulus so bulk modulus is nothing but again stress by strain and the si unit is newton per meter square correct now compressibility is the reciprocal of bulk modulus which means the si unit of compressibility will be per newton meter square so how it is per newton per meter square we know k is equal to 1 divided by b the si unit of bulk modulus is newton per meter square so if this goes to numerator we will get per newton meter square the si unit of stress can also be written as pascal and since the compressibility is the reciprocal of bulk modulus we can also write per pascal is the si unit for compressibility so now compressibility of a gas depends on pressure and temperature so gas compressibility is dependent on the pressure and the temperature we all know gases are more compressible gases are more compressible than solids and liquids so solids are having least compressibility they are less compressible because what is the reason why solids are less compressible because of the tight coupling between the neighboring atoms in solids the atoms are closely packed with each other and hence they has less compressibility when compared to liquids and solids so next let us see what is the need of studying all these things what are the applications where do we use all these things in our daily life so let us see few applications of elastic behavior of materials so the first one all engineering design require precise knowledge of strength of the materials used yes of course we build dams we build big big apartments we build huge buildings 
So without having the knowledge of materials, what we choose for the construction, we cannot give the quality. So in all the engineering aspects, it is very important to know about the materials property and also the behavior of the material, the type of the material, what we choose for the better reliability. So all engineering designs require a precise knowledge of the strength of the material. Of course, the strength is very important for the survival of building. So there must be a knowledge of this materials property in engineering aspects and also in minimizing the bending of loaded beam. You can see here the beam. So in our daily life, we will observe such kind of bending of beams. So in minimizing the bending of the loaded beams, we must have the knowledge of the type of material what we select and also in selecting metallic ropes for cranes. We all know cranes are used heavy load from one point to other point. So in choosing the rope of the cranes, we must know about the elastic behavior of materials. We must have the knowledge of the property of material what we are choosing for cranes. For cranes also we apply this elastic behavior of solids. So the next interesting topic is buckling. What is buckling? Why do we have to know about buckling? So when a load is applied to a beam, it bends. What happens if the load, heavy load is applied to a beam, beam of rod? Generally, it bends, right? So the bending of beam under load is called as buckling. So if this is a rod, and if I apply some load here, heavy load, we can observe there is a bending in the rod. So that bending of beam under the load is called as buckling. So let us consider a bar whose Young's modulus is Y and the length of the bar is L and the breadth is B and also its depth, the depth of the bar is D. If I apply some load at the center, so let us consider a bar of beam whose Young's modulus is Y and its length is given by L and the breadth of the bar is B whose depth is given by D. So the weight or the load I am applying at the center. So what happens when the load is applied at the center? So the beam will bend which is nothing but there will be a sagging of beam and that sag is given by delta. So we can write the expression for sagging as delta is equal to W L cube divided by 4 B D cube Y. This is the formula for calculating the amount of sagging of materials. So what are these terms? Let us see. W is nothing but the weight I have added, weight I have applied here. And L is the length of the bar, Y is Young's modulus, D is the depth and B is nothing but the breadth. So now we know as the load is applied, bending of beam will take place. How to reduce this sagging? How to reduce the sag? Look at this expression carefully. By varying certain terms in this expression, we can conclude that we can say that sagging can be reduced. How it is possible? Look at the expression. We have delta is equal to W L cube weight and L is nothing but the length divided by 4 B D cube Y. Here weight and length are directly proportional with delta but you can observe B and D are in denominator. As these two quantity increases, this quantity will decrease. They are inversely proportional to each other. So to reduce sagging, we can increase B and D values, which means if the breadth and depth are increased, sagging will get reduced. Sagging is inversely proportional to D cube and B. So sagging can be reduced by increasing the depth and breadth. So where do we observe this buckling? We do observe buckling in our daily lives. Sometimes a bar with more depth may also bend. Consider a bar whose depth is more can also be bent. 
So, to avoid that, bar is given I shape. This type of bars you, you may have all come across. This type of I shape bar beams, we are all familiar with the I shape bars we will come across in our daily life. So, it what happens if the shape is I? It gives large load bearing capacity. It gives large load bearing surface and enough depth to prevent bending. So, to prevent bending, I shape beam will give uh, enough depth and also large load bearing surface. So this shape also reduces the weight and the cost of the beam. I shape materials or I shape bars are less weight and also the cost is also very less and it is also much stronger. I shape beams are preferred because they are less weight and they are cost effective and also they are much stronger. Pillars. Pillars also plays a major role in construction. Pillars with rounded ends like this. If the pillars are having rounded ends, they support less load. To overcome this disadvantage, pillars with distributed shape at the ends, they support more load than pillars with rounded ends. If you choose the pillars with the distributed ends, that is a great choice because it can support more load when compared to the pillars with rounded ends. So our next topic is lateral strain. So what is the meaning of lateral strain? So it is nothing but the ratio of change in diameter. We know diameter is given by D and I am talking about change in diameter that is nothing but delta D. The ratio of change in diameter to the original diameter. We know strain is nothing but change in dimension to original dimension and here we are talking about diameter. So the ratio of change in diameter delta D to the original diameter of the wire is called as lateral strain. So lateral strain is change in diameter to the original diameter. Change in diameter is delta D, original diameter is D. It is sometimes denoted with a negative sign. So I will tell you what is the significance of negative sign. When a wire is stretched, its length increases. So take a rubber band or a wire. So just try to pull the rubber band. So what happens? So initially it will be with a round shape. As you stretch it, what happens? The length of the rubber band will increase and the diameter will get decrease. Correct? So when the length of the material increases, the diameter gets decreases. That is why it is denoted by negative sign. So when a wire is stretched, it, its length increases. At the same time, its diameter decreases. As the length of the wire increases, the diameter gets decreases and hence it is denoted by negative sign. So length increases along the direction of the applied force. Whatever the force we are applying along the direction of the applied force, the length increases. Or if I apply force in the opposite direction, the length decreases. Length changes along the direction of applied force. So diameter decreases along the perpendicular direction. As the length increases, diameter decreases. It changes in perpendicular direction. And that is why it is denoted by negative sign. So lateral strain is given by minus delta D divided by D. Next important concept is Poisson's ratio. So to understand this Poisson's ratio, we must have the knowledge of lateral strain. So what does it say? How to define this? It is nothing but the ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain. We know what is longitudinal strain, correct? It is nothing but change in length to original length. We also know what is lateral strain change in diameter to original diameter. So it says that the ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain is a constant for given material. It is denoted by sigma which is nothing but minus lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain. I told you the significance of this negative sign. It is given by minus delta D by D divided by delta L by L which is nothing but change in length to original length which is the longitudinal strain definition. So the negative sign shows that as the length increases, the diameter decreases. So Poisson's ratio has no unit and no dimension. Why there is no unit and no dimension? Because it is dealing with 
both strain quantities. In numerator also we have strain and in denominator also we have strain. For strain there is no unit and hence Poisson's ratio has no unit and no dimension. So the value of Poisson's ratio depends on the nature of material which means for different different materials the value of Poisson's ratio varies. It is not same for all the materials. For most of the materials Poisson's ratio lies between 0.2 and 0.4. Generally the range is from 0 to 0.5 but for most of the materials the Poisson's ratio value lies between 0.2 and 0.4. When there is no change in volume, when there is no change in volume, the body is perfectly incompressible. For perfectly incompressible bodies, the value of Poisson's ratio is maximum and the value is 0.5. This point is very important to keep in mind and it helps in your competitive examination. The value of Poisson's ratio lies between the range 0 and 0.5 for most of the metals. It is 0.2 to 0.4 but for the bodies which are perfectly incompressible the Poisson's ratio value is 0.5. So this is all about few information about the applications of elastic behavior of uh, materials and in the upcoming sessions let us see some more interesting concepts. Until then take care all of you. Thank you.